He's done it all. People say he was the best. But there's a two part with this remark and it starts with a but. He never reached his full potential. Was it his lifestyle or was it bad press? And he's here today to tell us his story. Why do you think you were so volatile or violent, yeah? Hey, listen, some of the things I've done was on the border. I mean, you can dress it up as you like, you know. But sometimes, later on in life, you get challenged and, you know, I would say 99.9% .9 of the rugby stars would walk away. Uh, I wouldn't. Jail for punching an opponent and then banned from international rugby for a year. My temperament was different than most players, if you like, you know what I mean? But again, it was an amateur sport. I wouldn't get him paid to play. I didn't want to be... Um, uh, all the kids looking up to me, I didn't want that, I never wanted that, you know, and uh, I'm not the thug everyone made out, you know what I'm saying. Club last week is facing four charges of theft and fraud. The former Pontypool scrum half was reminded on bail by Cardiff magistrates. You know, we were in a professional job back then, but it was it was on TV, well. But the WIU have ruined Walsh Rugby, you know. And, uh, That's what it's down to. Absolutely. There's no two ways about it. It's, uh, it's just ruined and uh, I, I can't see in the shortfall or in, in the near future I was going to pick up. I forgive them never, I'll never forgive them. what they did to me, those people at that time, you know. You've spoken, you know, off camera. I was mad on cocaine. Um, after you finished playing, you, you know, I like to see why it's so prevalent in, in footballers, really. When you're playing in front of 40, 50,000 every week. Well, I found uh, the replacement for my rugby was cocaine. Depression is a terrible thing, but drug dependence and depression could be a killer. What's going on, people? Welcome to the Central Club. This episode is brought to you by Reinspire Printing and CBD Cardiff. If you haven't already, make sure you press that like button, subscribe to the club, and hit the bell button to be notified of future content. Today, we're in for a treat. Sat next to me is a living legend. If you know, you know. If you don't, then tough shit. This is the first guest that has been suggested by a handful of previous guests, many off social media, and also my dad. He's done it all. People say he was the best, but there's a two part with this remark and it starts with a but. He never reached his full potential. Was it his lifestyle or was it bad press? One thing's for certain, whatever he played, he was held as a saint. And he's here today to tell us his story. I'm nervous, excited, and grateful. To welcome you, Rugby Union and Rugby League legend, Mr. David Bishop. Hi, guys. Welcome on, Dave. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Would you say uh, that was the right term, Saint? Mm, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean there, but uh, when you said uh, reach his potential, I, re I reached my potential. It just uh, people in, up above him wouldn't let me go. You know. But my potential was reached really with Pony Pool, and I think people see that. and. Uh, you know, when I went rugby league, I didn't want to go. Um, I think the WIU paid half my fee just to get rid of me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what we do with all our guests, we take it back to the start uh, yeah. for the people who, who who don't know who Dave Bishop is. Mm. Um, so where are you from, Dave? Newtown originally, just on the bay. Um, uh, born in Glossop Terrace, 31st of... Uh, October, Halloween, 1960. My mother said it rained, it poured, it thundered and lightning. Um, I'll tell you about that story later. But yeah, I was born there. They were trying for five years for kids and thought they couldn't have kids. And, and then six of us came along in like seven, eight years. There's me and Michael, Terry. Uh, my sister Wendy, who passed away at cot death, and uh, Sean and Cecilia. And uh, funny enough, on Friday was Michael's um, 60th birthday and we all... I went to a restaurant and we were all there and uh, we had a drink to my mum and dad, you know, my sis. Um, yeah, and all the family got together. It was good because I'd just come back from Australia and uh, it was really good. Yeah, and you see the tan on you there. <laughs> so you like it. You've got family over there, have you? Yeah, my daughter had two grandchildren. Yeah, my oldest daughter, is, uh, Samara, um, Talia and Joe, my um, my grandkids. So uh, with, with, with the pandemic, I haven't seen them for three years, you know. Yeah. You can see them on... Um, FaceTime or Zoom or whatever, but it's not the same. Not the same, no. no. Um, Newtown, what was that like back in, in the 60s, 70s growing up? Well, I mean, my mother was one of 13 Irish family, you know. And um, I, all, I, all I had is great thoughts. I, I remember um, smashing the coal up out the back. Um, 
you know, it's just a big family, a big community, you know, where family was welcome and you could walk into any house down, uh, down Ellen Street. And yeah, it was just a, a good, then we went to Lam Rumi, then when I was four and a half, moved to Bronte Crescent. Yeah. Yeah, Newtown and, got knocked down, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. They sent most of them to Trowbridge and Fairwater. Uh, Fairwater. That's right. Yeah. You Catholic then? Yep. Yeah? Yep. Don't go in further than I've yeah, strict Catholic. Yeah. Um, Oh, also your father your father done, he had a lot of pubs and stuff didn't he? yeah he had loads of pubs my father became a Catholic later on in life but my mother was Catholic we were brought up as Catholics um, my dad had um, a Royal Naval Club in town um, he had the Tudor which was probably the best pub um, in Greenstone uh, Greenstone I'd say in Riverside then he had the retreat he had the pub Admiral Napier um, some in Fairwater, I don't know. The leather bottle he had, didn't he? he had it's the, the leather, joke now, but... Yeah, he had the leather bottle. And then uh, I think the last pub he had where my mum passed away was um, the Yellow Kangaroo, which is the old Four Elms down in the road. Yeah. Do you have any memories of the, of the pub days? Yeah, I do. Ho horrible memories. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Well, he'd make us bottle up, he'd make us change, do the lines and everything else, and... You know, we were like slaves. Grafted hard, like, yeah. yeah. Well, for kids we were, yeah, you know. Yeah. So on a Sunday morning... We'd have to go to church. He'd make us go to church. And then when we come back, we had to do the bottles and all that. So I hated the pubs. So how did someone growing up uh, in the in the pub culture, you know, is is that well, kind of how you got into the sport? No, stuff? no. My man was captain in the kayaks. He was, um, you know, and well, to be fair, I mean, I used to eat going to rugby with him at first. Um, my mother had six kids. Uh, as I said, my, my sister died, um, um, Wendy, uh, caught death. But... She still had five kids, and, and she, my old man would take me to rugby on the afternoon, you know, in, in, on a Saturday afternoon. I used to eat it because it was good when he played away because I'd go on a coach with all the fellas and all that, and they'd all look after you. But when he played at home, we'd go upstairs. It was by the, uh, the old Central Boys Club across the road under the bridge, yeah, and I'd go upstairs, and I'd be up in a skit alley on my own for about I know, two hours. But I'd get one bottle of Coke, pack it of crisps, and I'd stuck up there on my own, you know, and... So, but that's how I got into the rugby, and I loved the rugby, and um, and that's how I started really. And we lived in uh, Bronte Crescent in in and then we moved to because um, the, the family was getting bigger. We moved to Dunster Road, forty three Dunster Road, opposite Penabrine School, and we had a patch outside. As we called it the patch. It was a green field type of thing, only small. I mean, I went past there the other week, and uh, God, it's tiny. But at the time, it seemed like Cardiff Arms Park. It seemed massive, yeah. yeah. So that's where we started then. And I think even going back then, my old man had a plan for me then, you know. Yeah, yeah. So your dad kind of guided you quite a lot into... Oh, oh uh, yeah, up until, you know, till right through, you know, right through my career, really. Um, I know it's, it's kind of common knowledge. It's like a pub quiz question that you represented your country in like four different sports. Yeah, I was lucky enough to do that, yeah. Yeah, can you name the sports with the people? Rugby Union, Rugby League, Baseball, Boxing. And was uh, the boxing, the baseball, I know baseball's a summer sport, so it was probably something you just do in the summer when you're not playing rugby. Did you, was boxing first? Was rugby, what was first for you? Oh, rugby's always been my first sport. Yeah? Um, yeah, I mean, there was a time now, I won a couple of Oz championships and that. Um, he's gone over Roy Agland, he, he was our boxing coach and... Um, you know, I was tipped to go. Pro, you know, everyone wanted me to go pro, but uh, I didn't have. I didn't have the discipline. I just my. I wanted to play rugby, and that was it. And uh, a lot of people said I was a better boxer than I was a rugby player, but I, I disputed that big time. But uh, I always wanted to be a rugby player, and I was eight years of age. I played for the under 11s, 9, 10, 11, went right through. Uh, went through the system up until under 15s, and is that at the kayaks? Or? No, no. It's, in school, your school, school, school boys. sorry, yeah, yeah. schoolboys. So then, um, when it starts to get a bit different, then at 15, we won the Jewish Shield, which is a big cup, you know, with combined Wales, you know. So we won that, and uh, we get an automatic invite then to go and play for Cardiff Youth, um, for play for Cardiff schools. And uh, I started to rebel a little bit then. I said to the old man, I'm going to the kayaks, <laughs> you know, because you're ex kayak captain, and I had some friends there, you know. Um, black friends and things, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And um, he said, no, you're not. He said, he said uh, I said, well, I don't want to play for Cardiff. He said, you're not playing for Cardiff. You're going to do all the Tidians, my school. Now, when you imagine, I mean, you look back on things, I mean, I'm great friends with them, but all the judges and solicitors and the top accountants, <laughs> you know, in the sixth form. And anyway, I went, he made me, and uh, I said, well, I won't play. And uh, he said, okay. And he put me full-time behind the bar then. 
So it was that. So I, I soon came to my thoughts. I just didn't want to go to the Hills, you know. I just, you know, even though it's my old school, I just didn't want to go there. And reason? Reason? Just um, didn't know anyone, you know. The ones I did know, they were all my ex prefects. You know, used to put me into <laughs> detention and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the best move I ever done in my life, believe it or not. I went there after, you know, and after a after a time, I'd say a couple of weeks. You know, I got into it, got to know the boys and everything. They're all a bit older than me. I had a great season, and uh, I said to my man, I said, "Brilliant." He said, "No, you're going to Cardiff." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "No, I'm staying with the Hills." No, no, Cardiff. No. I mapped out, and that's what happened. I was on a bench seven times for Cardiff Youth, and uh, I never. I said, "I'm leaving. I'm going back to the Hills." Said, "You'll play next game. Play next game." And, I was it. I never got dropped again. Why? What? What was the reason you didn't want to play for Cardiff? Was you one of them boys who just I want to play well, for my? No, I, I didn't want to. Exactly like I didn't want to. I was just starting to rebel a little bit. I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was starting to rebel a little bit, and um, I turned around. I wanted to play for the kayaks because I had some friends there. You know what I mean? And yeah. I knew it'd offend him anyway. You know, I was trying to get his get his ass in his hand type of thing. But um, he ill, so I went to the Hilton and. I didn't want to go to the Hilton, you know. I even said, no, I'm not going to play rugby, pack rugby. And then he gave me full-time behind the bar, this, that, this, so I soon went back. But it was a great season when, I, you know, I really enjoyed that season. And then just as I sort of settled in, I said, oh, I really, you know, I got thanks that. I said, I, I, you know, I couldn't see this happening in a million years. It was a great move. I said, no, you're going to Cardiff. And just as I settled in in one place, he shifted me into Cardiff then. Now, all the people at Cardiff, I had a year head start me and all that, and... I didn't want to go, but as I said, I was on the bench seven times. In those days, you used to have trials and that. And I was tiny, I wasn't a big kid. And um, there's one thing I didn't have, I, you know, I had all the skill, I had everything. Didn't have no pace. I was slower than the tax rebate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, Cardiff, I went to Cardiff on the bench seven times and then I played. He said, I said, I'm going, I'm on the bench seven times. He said, you'll play next game and I did and the rest is history really. Why do you think he was rebelling against your dad? Um, well, lots of things, really. I think, you know, when, if, when you're 16 years of age and you've left school and, you know, I don't know. Um, I just think it's something, a, a natural process that, you know, someone like me would go through, you know what I mean? Um, we're brought up in a, a strict household, you know what I mean? What I mean, you, you didn't hesitate to give your ass a bash in, you know what I mean? And um, Different now, different times. Isn't it? Well, uh, you know, and... When you look back at it, you know what I mean? I don't think there was that much wrong with, you know, getting a cane in school. I mean, if you had the cane in school, I'd be terrified my father find out, could give me an item when I got home. So, you know. Yeah. So, but um, he just sort of, he had a plan, I think, and he mapped it out. And um, pretty much, you know, up until, uh, up until I finished playing rugby, like, really. Yeah. Um, so how did a Cardiff boy... You know, you, you obviously went in and, and went into like the professional side a bit further on, did you? But how did someone who, who grew up in Cardiff, you know, end up being a legend in places like Because Cardiff kicked me out because of my off the field behaviour. Okay, can we go in? Yeah, I don't mind that. Um, what happened? Uh, I played for Wales that year. As I said, I was on the bench seven times. I played for Wales that year, Wales Youth. Then got sent off um, playing for Cardiff Youth. And, Two weeks later, I played for Wales again, but I missed it because I was banned. Um, and then, out of the blue, I was picked to go to um, Italy with the Cardiff first team on tour for a week. And I didn't want to go because I was still in the youth. And Anyway, Roger, Be uh, Roger, uh, Roger Beard came up, uh, who was, used to be my coach, who was the first team coach then for Cardiff. And um, he turned around and he said, uh, you've got to go, you've got to go. So I went and... From that trip onwards, things started to go bad for me. Um, I was the youngest on tour, still in the youth. So I took me on tour. Um, I remember I nicked a, I nicked a motorbike um, in one of these villages and uh, cut a long story short, I ended up in smashing, smashing the motorbike up. And, <laughs> and um, it was one of the, you know, the scooters and everyone had them out there and all that. And uh, it sort of made a sausage, a sausage roll into a buffet, really, but... <laughs> And then one night we nicked a bottle of vodka, me and uh, another teammate, and someone else got accused of it. Ended up bashing the, um, bashing the, uh, uh, bashing the uh, coach. So you know, 
So I was the only one on tour to get sort of get banned, and I got banned when we got back for two weeks. And funny enough, when I went to Tito's the day we got back on a Friday, I went to Tito's on the Saturday. I went to Tito's that night. That's the first time I got into trouble then. Off the Nightclub is it? Yeah. yeah. And um, got into a fight, and and it's the first time I got charged. Then I got charged, you know, with, in Section 18, and uh, I was still with Cardiff at the time, and. Um, uh, we were playing, uh, I think it was Richmond or something, somewhere like that, I think, up in London. We were staying in a hotel, and one of, one of the hotels got damaged, uh, hotel rooms got damaged. <laughs> and uh, I was part of it, but there was, there was about four or five of us. And um, they said, step forward, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I stepped forward, the next thing they kicked me out of the club, which was the end of the world for me at the time. Was you the only one who stepped forward? <laughs> <clears throat> there was three of us put forward, um, four of us in. I don't mind. No, Spikey Watkins was the main one. Um, Spikey, he lives in uh, ex Wales captain and everything. But he said Spikey can't step forward because he'll be shot out of the club, which inevitably, inevitably happened to her. Four of us got thrown out. So at the time, then um, it was the end of the world for me. I was up Cardiff since I was eight years of age. And anyhow, um, after a few weeks, um, I was in college, and uh, Evervale come in. They said, "Will you come down and play for one game?" And I said. Uh, my old man, he got older my dad, and my dad got me. He said, don't sign nothing, just say yes for one game. And I was not playing against South Wales Police. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the time, obviously people, um, you know, within regions now, with me, but at the time, playing for Abbeville, Pontypool, these were great clubs, weren't they? It's, it's not like it is now where it's Cardiff, no. Newport. Well, no, it's not. And uh, like there's only four regions. But I mean, back in the day, uh, I've always been against the regions, but back in the day... Mm. You could go to Evervale, if you, you know, you didn't have, Cardiff usually had, the, they were like the Real Madrid of rugby, if you like, Cardiff. Um, you're Cardiff, Newport, Swansea and Clanetley, they're the four big sides, you know. That's why they turned them into regions, really. Well, yeah. And, yeah, and but you had Ponty, Breathe, Neath. Yeah, but uh, they're still valley clubs, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're still little valley clubs. I mean, Neath went through um, bankrupt, didn't they, just just before it all turned yeah, professional. Turned over, yeah, yeah. But I mean, um, what 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 the old system gave you is if if you wasn't the best player, you go to the Wanderers, you go to Panas, you could go to Diga, you know. And Evervale wasn't much better at the time, so Paul Rees was there, Pablo, um, and he put my name forward. And uh, Pablo, uh, I went and played, and I played the one game, and I never looked back. I, I played there until I went to jail then in the match. <laughs> Before we go on to 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 your prison sentence. You know, nowadays, mm. like, we've always got an answer for something. If someone's up to some, or oh, he's got ADHD, or oh, he's got this, or oh, he's got that. Why do you think you were so violent. volatile or violent, yeah? Um, hey, listen, some of the things I've done was out of order. I mean, it, it, you can dress it up as, a, like, you know, a young boy um, pissed up, you know, I'm not blaming drink, but, you know, there's it, it a lot to do with things. Um, and, you know... You, 18, I'd finished boxing. Um, funny, I never got into a fight when, you know, when you when when I was boxing and all that. Um, I remember for, I had a fight outside T. There was a knocked a guy out one punch and sort of went from there. Then I had a reputation. No, but a reputation builds yeah, and all yeah. that. You know, and uh, like I said, sometimes I'm out of order, but sometimes later on in life, you get challenged. And, you know, I would say 99.9% .9 of the rugby stars would walk away. Uh, I wouldn't. Do you ever, do you ever come unstuck? No, lucky enough. Never. The team handed, I did. A couple of times. <laughs> but uh, no, no one-on-one, -on -one, no, never. Lucky enough. <clears> so so the prison, the the punch on the pitch was for Abbeville then? No. It was for... Pontypool. Pontypool. Can yeah. you, can you, so can you explain how that, that come about? Oh, well, yeah, I can. Easy. It was a derby against Newbridge on Wednesday night. Um, I was training on Sunday. Anyway, there's this kid, um, I, I refused to, I could just call it the Jarman incident, uh, the Newbridge incident, his name was Jarman. He was about six, four, six, five. he's chucking his weight about, this is his first, um, this is his first derby type of thing. And anyway, I called the boys, and I said, what the fuck's going on Yeah, They said, someone, calm him down, you know. Anyway. And he kept on, he kept on, he kept on, and, and the next thing, I said, leave, leave it to me, I went to the line, and come in, come in, I, I just gave him a clip. About four inches, but he's gone unconscious. And we played on. Referee never seen it, no one's seen it, well, except for a 
except for a journalist in the, in the stand. And oh, the, the next thing, it was a great game as well, you know, it was a good game. And Bishop Sixner turns the tide, and it just went from there. It was flat out national press, um, news at 10, everything had ended up. And uh, um, I turned up training for the Welsh team on um, on Sunday, and I, I said, what's he doing here? There's Ray Giles there, who was uh, number three, number four. And he said, um, until this blows over. I said, well, what happened until it's until proved guilty? And, you know, I haven't been charged or anything. Was this filmed? No. The game? Oh, the, the game? No. Yeah, well, no, I don't know. We've never, we've never seen anything about it. So you've never had no proof? There was no proof given? It was just the, no, the witness? No, no, just the witnesses. And his father's come forward and said, he said but I didn't get charged for six months. So you can imagine, no, I'm, I was number two behind Teddy Holmes. After fighting all that time to get in, and um, he just turned around, and you know he turns up, and then so the case takes nine nine months before, six months before they charge me. So all this time I'm out of the wall squad, you know I can't because of which you know. So I think there's something going on here. There's there's works beyond you know beyond my future going on here, like what's going on type of thing. And um, there was people at work. I just there was there was barristers coming on TV, and it was just, I mean, God forbid, if if there's a murder in Cardiff one day, it might be in a, it might be in the paper the next day. At the very very push, it'd be a little bit the day. This was solid for three weeks in the paper every day, every every single day. There was something about it, something going on. I just knew there was something. You know, when you have that inside feeling, yeah, you know something's yeah. not right. And, uh, you just know, don't you? Oh, I just knew. And uh, anyway, they charged me then after, I think it was nine, six to nine months. So when they charged me then, I've gone not guilty. That's taken, and it was a section 45, 47, mind you know, common assault. That's taken 15 months to come in. So if you work this out now all the time, nearly three years into yeah, it, yeah. I'm out of the Wasp team and all that, you know? Are you still playing for Ponty Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're still, yeah, you're still active. Yeah, but Pony Poole put a, um, you know, what people don't realise at the time, Pony Poole sort of, they could see what was coming. I don't know if they see how big the wave was, but they could see there was a storm building, if you like. So they, they sort of arrested me for two games, which I went potty about. But they did, you know, just just stay out of, stay out of the picture. For two, yeah, for, thinking it would blow over. But. Well, no, but I knew, but, but this was just, it was a tidal wave coming and uh, you, you had no idea. I mean, Trying national to set an example of you, innit? Well, that's what they said, but they never, listen, it's never happened since or before. So, you know, it, it, they made an example, it, it, they just pinned me. They, they, they've, there's been punch-ups, there's been bootings. On on national TV, you know, Wales All Blacks, um, Wales England, on four or five months after um, after I got found guilty, you had a copper on TV, break fucking tulips jaw off, um, on TV, you know, Wade Dooley, he was, he was a police, police sergeant or something, and he breaks uh, Phil Davis's yeah. jaw. Part of the sport. No, yeah, and he, on, he, in front of millions. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean. Nothing happens. Mine was in front of three or four thousand. Nothing, nothing happened. Yeah, but you know, um, so you know, there was certainly something going on big time. So then, in their wisdom, then after uh, I go to court, and so, I I had to go to Crown Court, which you, know, you can't go to Crown Court for a common assault. That's pathetic. Yeah. But because of the, they said because of the, the size of the, um, you know, uh, the case and the Your media name, attention yeah. and name and all that. Anyway, he gives me a month in jail for three years of drama, a month in jail, three years of attention for a year uh, for, for a month in jail. No, he gives me a month. I, I, I turned around. I said, "What do you say?" He said, you got a month in jail. I said, "What do you mean? I got a month in jail? I meet my missus for lunch." Yeah, but. A month in jail. Only that goes over. Was that your first time? No, no. No, my first time is when I was uh, 17, when I went to jail for three years. But this is uh, this is rugby, you know what I mean? So I just knew something was a bit. Anyway, I get, I get some month in jail. I'm in jail one night. I comes out in the morning and it's all over the papers. And, everything. and funny enough, the uh, the governor asked my autograph. And I, <laughs> it's the truth. He said, I don't think you should be. He said, the only chance you could sign this, I did. And anything you want, I said, I wanted. And he know straight away. I said, can I have my own cell? And this, the PO said, Trump's up. No, he can't. He's over, overbooked. He said, get him his own cell. So you know straight away you're on the wrong foot. But well, anyway, got I, got, I got foot. Judge and Chambers the next day now. Did you? Yeah. Out? Out, like that, out. And uh, that was all filmed. It's, you can see all that on YouTube. And... Um, 
Court of Appeals then, and Court of Appeals, at least, you know, they seen they said, look, they could be a suspended sentence, so which was um, far, 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 far overrated anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, you know. How long was they suspended? Two years. <laughs> you should have just done the time. No, no, you could just, have done it again. But what I'm saying to you, after what I'd done, I never broke his jaw or nothing, you know, just rendered him. Yeah. This guy's chucking his weight about. I mean, what type of man goes to court, uh, you know? To, you know, to, people uh, like Yeah, yeah. Well, was he? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he got sent off a few times after. So then, you know, I misses the World Cup. They banned me for 10 months. They miss, so to keep me out of the World Cup, and it gets on, it goes on and on. So so anyway, um, they come back from the World Cup. Um, I get banned for 10 months. We got Pontypool finished third from bottom. Uh, I get Mark Ring with me, and we go up Pontypool, and we go one game under. I saw two. that, yeah, yeah. I've seen a few interviews now. What do yeah. you think of Mark Ring? Oh, best player I play with. Most gifted player I play with. Really? Oh, absolutely. Brilliant player. The only thing Mark never had was pace, but he had this um, he had this magic of he just slow the game down in slow motion, and everyone sort of slowed down with him. You know, I mean Jonathan Davis, is a unbelievable player, but I only played with Jiffy um, when we got our beat caps together. Um, and I played me and Jiff on Great Britain, so we played a couple of times together um, on a league tour. Yeah, but for me, uh, Mark Ring was the best. There's no two ways about that. Um. Can we just go in a bit about uh, Ponty Poor? Mm. You know, what, what 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 were the people like up there to you? What was the club like? <sighs> well, <sighs> right, I got, I got to go back to Abervale, right? We got, we yeah, Abervale. sorry, we I've did. Got, we, yeah, I've come out, I've come out of jail, okay? And Abervale, straight back, I go straight back to Abervale, okay? So in the meantime, now Pablo got me to Abervale, had gone to Newport, okay? So <sighs> Abervale made me vice-captain. Of the youngest vice captain, you know, to try and keep me at the club, I presume. Excuse me. And um, so I started off with Ebbervale that year. And, and don't forget, you know, we we were one of the bottom lows, you know, the, the lower sides in the league. You know, you had your top six, top seven. Um, and we were like uh, Abertaleri, Tradiga, you know, Ebbervale, you know, Wanderers, Panath. We are on about that, you know, that, that type of thing. But what it did give me, Callum, was give me... Week in, week out, it was give, it give me... Yo, wait there, we got to stop, right? Because I'm not having this no more. Oh. <laughs> no, no, the other... It's Cullen. It's not Callum. What did I say, Callum? Yeah, oh. don't worry, everyone says it. Oh. Okay, <laughs> was no, go on. Oh, Sorry, Di. What it did give me was... Um, and what it does give you, whether you're playing for Panath or, or the Wanderers or whatever, what I was getting with Aberville was every week, week in, week out, I was getting exposure. I was getting first-team exposure. So... You know, whereas if you're sitting on the bench for someone, you're not getting that exposure. Exactly. So I said, if I get my B cap, I was in line to get a B cap and all this. Um, and I said, if I get the B cap, I said, I'll stay with Eberville. Anyway, I never got the B cap. They give it to um, uh, Rob Dwyer, um, Bob Dwyer, who was, uh, got it for his sixth or fourth, fifth time. The teacher in Flannery, nice guy. Um, but, but So anyway, I, Charlie Faulkner informed me and he said, right, do you want to come to Newport? And I said, uh, yeah, pretty much the deal was done. And it's a true story, this. And uh, I spoke to him on the Thursday. I said, right, I'll be training on the Monday. And uh, can't wait to have you at your bish, he said. Our oh, last game of the season, uh, last game, my last game for Eberville was Pontypool Pool at Pontypool Pool Park. So we get beat 39 or 40 points to nine, and I was man of the match, believe it or not. And... Um, I had to go up to the club. I think the club knew, but I just said, look, I'm leaving. And, you know, and it's the hardest thing because they took me in um, when Cardiff kicked me out. Um, when I went to jail, I come out to jail. You know, they took me, me there, yeah. Yeah, they were really good to me. And, um, and to this day, you know, I've got fond memories of uh, of Eberville. Um, so, and I'd already told Charlie I'll be in training on Monday. So, was sorry, that, sorry, so that was for another sentence, was it? The, what's that? Because you said I went know, to jail for an affray. I had two threes. How many fucking times you been in jail? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> so they, they, yeah. So because that's what I was confused with. Because I thought mm. when I was seventeen, was... I went to jail. So I, I, I got six years for uh, for two uh, for two affrays, but the run concurrently. Okay. And in them days, it's a good story about that. But in them days, you could um, uh, you do a year and you'd be out. You yeah. Know, parole, which is changing now, I think. Um. So uh, before and after. So. I told them I'd go into Newport because Newport one of the big clubs, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. you know. And uh, 
So I says my farewells to Abbeville. I says my farewells to Abbeville, and which was the other thing. It's like you know when you join a new school, if you like, and I leave in a school type of thing. And as I goes downstairs, my father's there with Ray Prosser, Charlie Ford, uh, Charlie Ford, Bobby Windsor, Graham Price, all these Terry Cobner, all these world superstars. Like I, I goes, come on, let's go. Sit down five minutes. He said they got to sit to Mr. Prosser, who was the coach. I didn't even know Prosser. And I said, Dad, let's go. I don't I can't be doing this. Let's go, let's go. So then he goes like this, Pross, massive man. He goes, you're going to those black and amber cans. He said, are you? He said, so I looked like that. And I said, he said, why don't you come here, son? I said, oh, Dad, come on, I want to get out here. Let's go. So two minutes, he said, he said, we're playing in Australia in three weeks' time. He said, do you want to play against Australia? So I looked at the process. I said, you haven't got that, you know. There's always, like, a selection committee and things, but he was God Almighty. Yeah, because back then, clubs could play countries and stuff. Oh, it, well, in Wales, the only ones to do it, yeah. So straight away, right. straight away, he's grabbed me, he's grabbed me, you know, he perked me up. So um, this other fella comes over there and he said, um, which wasn't important at the time, but I'll give you a couple of hundred quid, you know, this back in 1981. I'll give you this, I'll give you a car, blah, 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 anyway. But the... What a grab in the Australian game. It's in 1981. So um, I looked at him like that and I said, uh, it was a bit of wrangling went on and, you know, back and forth with my dad, like, you know, my old man was sort of. So I said, I'll see you Monday training. So and that's that's my Pony Pool journey started. And uh, and it was all because I played against them on the Saturday, my last game. I was going to Newport on the Monday and uh, I went to Pony Pool instead. Did you have any comments, like, any verbal with Newport after that or no I don't mean to, um, it, 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 in those days it's just in case you don't answer the phone or <laughs> leave, leave, leave it to your old man to so you I'll, play him like it's just I, I'm, I'm, I know him all yeah. my old man said I thought he was coming to you <laughs> <laughs> so he, he was the architect as well was your dad more of like the you know my agent yeah he had a plan for me yeah um, I mean when I signed for uh, Ebervale first of all he went potty he went ballistic because I didn't consult him and all that. But, you know, um, yeah, he was behind, you know, and, and believe it or not, as much as from the outside it looked like we'd always be at each other's throats, uh, I listened to everything he said. I mean, going back to Lan Rimney, you know, on the patch, he he had me kicking with my left foot when I was like six, six seven. You know what I mean? And mm. passing on my weak side. So all my yeah. weaknesses, he had me passing, doing. And at the time, you know, you think... So he turned his back and he start going back with your right foot and he'd catch you, you know. He said, do you want to go in or do you want to stay out? So, you know, so uh, and what it, what it gave me, if you had any weaknesses in, in, in rugby, um, you know, always work on your weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing you just said then, Di, which I'm, I think is fascinating as well. You said when you signed to Pontypool, some guy said, you know, I'll give you a couple hundred quid and yeah, a card yeah. and stuff. No, like, did, yeah, looked is that what me. it was like? Pete Lawler. No, clubs? um... I think, you know, some of the, um, Mark Ring, I mean, he played for Cardiff all his life till I got him a pony pool in 87, 88. Never had a penny in his life. And uh, he was top boss international. Yeah. I mean, um, there was little bits, um, you know, going under the table, if you like, but um, not as much as I was on. I mean. as well you know you we look at rugby now it's professional yeah. it's, it's well paid but I don't see it the coverage as much as you would you'd have more coverage like you said you was on the news every night for that for the trouble and stuff yeah. it was like you you know we we're in a professional job back then but it was it was on TV more but the WIU have ruined Welsh rugby you know and, uh, that's what it's down to absolutely there's no two ways about it that uh, Look, as you just you just touched upon it um, two minutes ago that clubs played countries. We're the only only country, this little country, Wales, where clubs played countries. England, 
it'd be regions, you know, and um, Ireland, it'd be Munster or Leinster type of thing I'd play. But when they, when, when touring sides came to Wales, you'd have Glen Atley play them, you'd have Pony Paul play them, Cardiff play them, Newport play them, but, which is unheard of in world rugby, you know. Yeah. But there's one thing about Welsh rugby is um, we're very tribal. You know, Pony Prees are not going to go to Cardiff and support Cardiff. It's like asking Cardiff and Swansea to join up in football. It's just impossible. Yeah. Liverpool and Everton, it just wouldn't happen. Man City, Man United. So what they've done is they've combined this uh, and, and there's some, you know, someone had a brainwave. Um, I think he was, a, he, was a, he was a New Zealander as well um, who came up with the idea. But it's just never going to ever going to work that you're going to get um, all, all, you know, the Valleys and Cardiff under the Cardiff brand the support Cardiff. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't agree with We've it. We've got 18,000 on Wednesday night when we played at Cardiff one night. They had the first time ever in my in my rugby union career, we had to have a um, kickoff was uh, delayed because of the people coming in on a Wednesday night in Cardiff City, you know, Cardiff City Centre. <laughs> They've got it there now. I think Cardiff got about 5,000. And if they want to argue about 1,000 euros, 1,000 there extra, so be it. But Newport get 3,000. Uh, the Ospreys, they get 4,000, 2,000. The Scarlets, they get 3,000. It's shocking. It's absolute, and the game's no good. So unless you played 60 caps this year, unless you've got 60 caps now, you can't play for your country. It's ridiculous. If I'm a coach of Wales, I want my players playing in the best competition, which is in France or England. You know, and <laughs> the truth of the matter is, right, that Warren Gatland, right, he've... Um, he just papered the cracks over in the last 10 years. You know, he, he was an exceptional coach and uh, we done exceptional and best ever. But there's a lot of cracks underneath it. With just him picked... gone now, they're, they're being shown again, you think? Well, yeah, it's shown up. And, uh, you know, what's showing up more than anything is the region. Is the regions. It's, it's, they're poor. Piss poor. Do you think we'll ever go back to the club rugby? Oh, I have no idea. I think, I don't think so, no. But I think that's the only way forward. But um, to get the crowds back. But I think the WRU want full autonomy of, of the game, you know, and they want to control everything. Yeah. Back to Pontypool then. Yep. What's your fondest memories of, of Pontypool? Oh, so many. Um, I broke my neck, uh, came back after 10 months, um, which, you know, was, was a miracle on its own. And we won the cup the first time ever that year. Um, I got player of, the, player of the man of the match in, uh, in, in, in that game, which was the Lloyd Lewis Trophy. Um I got so many. I mean, the fans took to me. You know, it was unbelievable. Um, uh, I mean, in the end, I left Pontypool not because I wanted to. I mean, I got up, uh, and, and nothing against um, uh, all Kingston Rovers fans because they were uh, they were amazing to me. But because um, I had to, I wasn't going to play for my country anymore. They just defiantly, deliberately wouldn't pick me. Um, you know, which was unprecedented. Uh, then some president, you know, and, and, you know, it's ridiculous. But at the end of the day, um, I signed for St. Helens before I signed for Old King's Rovers and failed the medical while I broke my neck. <laughs> so, you know, I came back then for Ponypool and then LKR came in a year later and I went inside for, for LKR. He was on the radar then, obviously. I was on the radar. Yeah, by one you. of the league teams. Well, when I was in jail, when I was 18, and I knew my father, I told you he planned my route and all that. <laughs> he come in and he got hold of a couple of rugby, uh, rugby league clubs because they, they, were, they were on to me when I was in Welsh Youth and that. And he said, "Listen, if you if you go as a on the on the pro board, go up and give my boys, you know, he'll come and play for you." So I had about two or three chairmen of the club go up. My father did and go to the pro board. You know, he, he looked the kid out. You know, he's seventeen. He, he's going to come out and play rugby league for us and all that. And anyway, I got my parole as it turned out. That's fantastic. Isn't it? And, and uh, when I come out, these people come down, phoned up. My father said, "Oh, he's changed his mind." Now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you know, my old man had a plan for everything at the time. But yeah. uh, you know, I mean, we got a side in, um, we got a side in, in in jail. Um, as soon as I went to jail, um, you had a weekend induction up in Ellsbury. Three years was the lowest sentence to get in there. Um, so I was, I, I ended up on Sea Wing next to um, a, a, it turned out to be a great friend, a kid from Cardiff called uh, Jam Shadella, and he sort of looked. He'd been in a few times, you know, and I was. I was a bit little wet behind the ears, you know, and all that. And um, he sort of looked after me. And then up there, they got they had um, an F and G wing. And uh, what prisons is Aylesbury? Aylesbury, yeah, Aylesbury, yeah, yeah, the y- YP centre. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and uh, F and G wing were for lifers, you know, uh, HMPs and all this, but of first timers. So I had two or three months on C wing, and they bashed me over there, and and uh, sort of that's when you know you got a raster coming down to me. He said, uh, "Cedric wants this," so I said, "Oh yeah, blah blah blah." I shot it. We ended up. I uh, knocked it, knocked it, knocked the guy out in the in the recess, and because they're feeling you out and all that. Yeah. And, and then you got the PTI, David Daisy, you know, the P P. He was the, uh, he like, uh, hey, Taff, come here, be in watch. You must be a Barry John or a Garth Edwards. Well, don't forget, like, eight months previous, I'd just played for the Walsh Youth, you know? And um, I said, no, no, I just want to do my bird. This. So he must have got all of my papers or something. So the next thing... Find out you played rugby. Yeah, yeah, he must have, and he pulled Fucking me out. David Bishop, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he pulled me out, and he said, uh, he said, listen, if you look out, if, if you play rugby, he said, I'm trying to put a side together, and if you play rugby... He said, I'll, you know, it'll be good for you and I'll look after you type of thing. So I looked like that. I said, well, I need my own boots. He said, you can have your own fucking rubber dub. He said, okay, right. <laughs> so anyway, I got a pair of my old boots sent in. And then we just went about getting aside, you know, and uh, uh, you, you the cliche, like, but I, there was there was murderers playing for us. There was rapists. There was fucking bank robbers. It was great. Not a mean machine. Oh, brilliant. But it was really good, you know. And um, we played the British Screws, believe it or not. We had a game against the... Uh, um, the Great Britain screws. And they all think that. they're fucking. We they're fuck about it as well, don't they? We, oh yeah, we beat them as well. It was great. So uh, yeah, so it was like a um, bit of a you know, it's a little bit of a. And I, I, bit I, sweet. I, yeah, it was, but um, it was a year out of my life, a year I regret forever. But I met some good friends there, and you know, and I got some fond memories as well. So you know. Yeah. Oh, did the um, the Welsh, you know, the call up from Wales come about then? We come about a year and a half later, you know, too late for me. I, sh- I was well before. When I was with Abbeville, I should have been, in, you know, it should have got to be. Was yeah. the call up at Pontypool, you know? Yeah, yeah. When I was at Pontypool, um, me and Jeffy played against France. I was here, Jeffy Jonathan Davis, um, um, on the Saturday uh, for Wales B, um, on Saturday. Um, and two weeks later, Wales were playing, were playing um, Australia. And in between, on the Wednesday, we were playing Cardiff. And um, Holmesy obviously was number one. I was in the squad. I'd been in the squad, you know, thereabouts for a bit. With Mark Douglas and Ray Jones. What do you think of Teddy Holmes? Uh, probably the best player I played against at, at, at nine. No doubt about that. Okay. Um, yeah, great player. Well, great player. But um, he, he he came on the short ball at the Arms Park. Um, when I told you about eighteen thousand, it was that night, and he came on the come on the front peel. And he ran into the madman, Chris Hewish. And madman put his put his shoulder in the back of his ass. He just dislocated him in one hit. And then I got called up then to play for Wales. So you know, madman. Scored a try as well, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I nicked, nicked the try. And 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 why, why don't you think you got that call up again? Well, no, I did, look, I was in the squad, it was always there or thereabouts. He was just not getting on the on No, the... well you couldn't there was no subs in them days, mind. No subs in them days. Uh-huh. No subs. Well, you you're 15 aside, and then no, there's no subs. You, you had subs, but you had to be carried off, or didn't you? know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't just say, "Hey, number nine, come off," and number nine go on. Yeah. They couldn't do that. But um, you know, I'd been in the squad back and forth since '83. You know, in and out, in and out. But you know, and then they give me the cap, and then I was on the bench then five times, and then this German incident, which we've already been through. Um, what your dad? What did your dad say to you when you got that, that final cap? Oh, he's, to feel nice. Well, you say the final cap is my only cap. The only cap? Yeah. Um, well, no one knew at that time, but um, oh God, he was just you know, broke down crying at my mum. And you know, and to be fair, you know, you don't see it at the time, as I say, but um, when you look back, it's, that's all his hard work, what he put into me and everything else, you know, is, uh, you know, paid off for him. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and... Uh, and he, he died back in 2016. I think sometimes, you know, what a letdown I was, you know, through you know how my career in the end turned out. Um, but there was other forces that worked there. But I suppose at times, you know, people say, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. But sometimes a lot more smoke than there is fire, you know. So I'm not saying for one minute um, I'm an angel. I may be an angel with a dirty face, but uh, that'd be about it. You know, I, what they'd done to me was nothing short of scandalous. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a podcast now, and sometimes I wonder why. Like, I only have one cap, 
Um, and it's 40 years later, you know what I mean? 35, 40 years later. And, you know, I Wherever mean, you go, mate, you're... Uh... Well, especially in Cardiff, I suppose, but... Well, uh, saying that, I'm going to play something, I'm going <laughs> to... This is off your friend, John Arton. Told me to put this, so I'm going to do it. Well, well when you... <laughs> 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 That's it. Yeah. When you do him, Bish, tell him that um, he was good, but he, he's got to let it go. He's got to <laughs> let it go because, uh, you know, he, he didn't, he wasn't as good as he thought he was. And also, he thinks he's more famous than what he is. He's only known in Cardiff. And maybe a couple of people in hell know him. Apart from that, he, he's not known anywhere. I can't go anywhere in Great Britain without signing an autograph or having a picture. <laughs> Bish, Bish has got to let it go. <laughs> He's only winding up. He says, "Oh, he's a good friend of mine." And uh, anything Art says, um, well, if, it, if, it, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't have had Art and mate. Well, no, they're all good friends of mine. And when he come down, you know, he lives in he lives in Edinburgh and all that. But hey, all these boys, look, we we got one thing in common, all of us. Um, they're footballers, so they make a lot more money. We're all off the estate. We're all, we, you know, we're yeah. all street kids, really. You know, even Bellamy, you know, I was best man at Bellamy's wedding, like, and, you know, speaking to Craig last night and uh, that's in this morning, it, it's just, um, they're the same, you know, we're, we're pretty much the same people as we were, you know, and, uh, I mean, for the footballers, I, it's a lot different now, and, you know, especially wages and that, but I never asked to be an icon or anything. I didn't want to be someone's, you know, I, I didn't ask for that. I just wanted to play rugby and be as good as I, as I could. And um, I was better than I thought, tell Arton. <laughs> no, no, hey, listen. No, I tease it. Loads of people, right? But, Wherever um, I've been, people talk about you. And when we said we were going to do uh, Dave B Die Bish, I know you don't like Die, but... No, it's know. not me and my mother leading. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> no, listen, loads of people from all over the valleys have been messaging, saying, make sure you get him on. So it's not just Cardiff. I know they don't disappoint it. So. so, Hulk KR, let's talk about it then. You went up there, what, what was... What well, was that like? just after I, I'd done the St. Ellen's deal, um, I'd just gone up for the medical. It was all done for 100 grand back in 87. Um, and at the time, St. Ellen's, that's like signing for um, Wigan were probably Man United um, yeah. and, and St. Ellen's and Liverpool, you know what I mean? There's not much between them. But So I went up, the deal was done and all that, and uh, I went up just for the medical. And right at the death, they failed me on my broken neck. So I had to jump in the boot of a car and sneak out because if you got caught there, I'd just, just come off a 10 months ban. Uh, with what the you if you get caught? What, you can't even speak to... Uh, Another club? No, professional, because they were professionals. Rugby union is amateur. So if you got caught speaking, even speaking on the phone to um, a, WI, a, a, a rugby league agent, you're banned, signed I. Yeah, <laughs> that was, that's how ridiculous it was. But anyway... Um, and there was a big blow up about that then because it said St. David going to Saints. And I was back the next day in Pony Pool and uh, big pictures and all that chicken. St. Nice. David, yeah. Uh, anyway, it, it, that wanted to be. And we probably had our best season ever then with me, Ringo. You know, we, we lost one game on here. Um, and we lost the semi final as well. But uh, we finished top. You beat Cardiff, didn't you, as well? Oh, I beat them three times. Yeah. Oh, sweet. And you Cardiff. had Mark played for them, didn't you? Yeah. Well. Mark is a legend there, you know what I mean? But um, always sweet to be Cardiff, mate. Always. He'd be a Cardiff boy. When I die, I'll be Cardiff. Hey, Cardiff born, do Cardiff bred. Do you feel like the, the, the Cardiff, even Cardiff football, Cardiff rugby, do you feel like we're represented by the people of Cardiff? I just, I don't feel that sometimes. Not seeing your children or in a tight legal spot, Neil McAvoy Law can help. We don't give legal advice, but we know good people who do. So if you want somebody on your side, giving it 100%, get in touch. Quote the Central Podcast for discounts, and we will be on your side. The Ochenwald. Believe it or not, right? Rugby's a little bit more snobbier than football. Oh, 100%. Do you know what I mean? It's um, like if, if only the Catholic schools play rugby in, 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 in Cardiff, in Wales, you know what I mean? Um, when you look at England... Um, Scotland and Ireland, it's, they're all public school boys because all, all, all the schools play football. But are we, are we represented properly at rugby? Uh, you mean rugby and football? I, I just, 
yeah, well, you know, you got Tan down there. He ain't got the best interest at Cardiff. You got Swansea, you know, like they got owners, caretaker managers who are local people, like, you know. I think the I think, interest for their club. Yeah, to be honest with you, my old man was a Jack, right? He's he born in I, I know, right? Um, I don't care what happens down the Jacks, uh, to be honest with you. But Cardiff, yeah. But I think it's such a global game now and it's such a big game. Um, and like you said, Tan, Tan's a billionaire and he doesn't seem to throw much money in there. But it's easy from us looking at, looking from the outside in, you know. Um, with, <coughs> with, 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 with the rugby, the rugby's ruined. Cardiff Blues have just changed the Cardiff. It's just ruined. And uh, I, I can't see in the shortfall or in, in the near future I was going to pick up, mm. to be honest with you. So what's it, you know, I've, I've heard some stories. I've heard loads of stories about you, Bish. Loads. Good, bad, you know. Give me um, a bad one. No, no, I'll let you, I'll let you say it. <laughs> no, because it might not be true, but I, I want to... talk. not true. Yeah, exactly. I want to talk about the um, the Great Britain Rugby League Tour. Yep. And you went to... Uh, Papua, Papua New, New Guinea, Guinea and New Zealand, yeah. And Australia. New Can Zealand. you take the floor, please, with that story? What story? Which one where we got tear gassed? <laughs> yeah, with the crowd, with the um, with the. Two, I'll tell you two quick stories, right? Um, me, Jiffy, and a couple of the boys, right? We we stay in a place called um, uh, Port Moresby, which is the capital, um, and we could only go out with armed guards and all that. It was that bad, you know what I mean? But one day I talked to the boys. I said, "Come on, let's go!" And uh, just a couple of hundred yards, it's like a main shop. Like um, you could see, like Max and Spencer's where it all is. So anyway, there was four of us, me, Jiffy, um, Eastwood was there, I think. There was about four of us, and we're walking down. we got all Great Britain stuff on and all that, and we're in the shop, and Jiffy goes, fucking you know. hell. He looks at us, what's up? And the whole shop had just stopped. Just stopped looking at us. And they're going, lie on, lie on, and they're just touching you, just feeling you. Just the only, they're coming up, and Jiffy's shitting us off. I said, relax. I said, we're all right, Joe, you know what I mean? And they're going, lie on, lie on. So we had a load of um, pamphlets with us. <laughs> they say in lions. Lions, 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 lions. Just touching lions, lions. Yeah. So, uh, but Jimmy should should she among the whole the whole place had stopped. So I said we started giving a few leaflets out and, uh, and and bits and pieces. And I said, look, I said, see. So as we walked out, they all start following us like that. Jimmy goes, you look at bitch. She thinks he's the fucking Pied Piper. <laughs> <laughs> So he just and he just followed us all the way up to the hotel. It was just you know it was, but it was funny to see the reaction on the boys there. Um, the other the tea gas tour we called it. Uh, we were playing uh, Papua New Guinea, I think. And um, let me tell you something. It's, it's unbelievable. The, the kids, every patch of grass, anything, they're all playing rugby league in Papua New Guinea. It's really? really unbelievable. You've really never seen nothing like it. And you know, with us being there, like it was just in, un, unbelievable. You know, so. We get to a game, you know, and um, we called it, it ended up being called the tear gas tour. Um, the boys play, I was on the, I think it was on the bench or something, or on playing. And um, all, the, all, the, all the fans, and, you know, they used to do, whoop, 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 whoop. They do it like, oh my life, it's unbelievable. Um, when it, so we're there playing, they're, the boys are playing, and these kids are climbing up these trees, and they're, and they're like apples just bending on the branches, right? And I'm looking up, I go, oh, fuck me. These kids fall, they're going to fall 30 feet, they're going to be dead. With it, with that, you're a crack. And about three kids come down the fucking tree, hey, and they've gone 30 feet, I'm not exaggerating. They've hit the floor, bounced up like that, bounced up in one hit. I've looked like that, and the fucking police have just run into them, beating them with big batons. Well, you've never seen nothing like it in your life. So we've got up screaming, get your fucking, leave the kids alone, only kids, this, that, the other. And the next thing, boom, boom, tear, the tear gas have gone off. They're all whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> and they're all of us, there's like a fucking panic. There's like a, there's, the crowd's going to go off. Anyway, the tear gas in, the wind blows all the tear gas over to us. <laughs> oh, it's no bullshit. We had to call a game off for 25 minutes. We all had to the water arise and wipe out us, all the tear, the tear gas. So, yeah. So, it, there was some, it, listen, there was some great times we had in, um, uh, in Papua New Guinea, but... Uh, Hey, there was a lot stays on. So what goes on and so stays on and so. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, how long did you stay up okay for then? Um, well, that's a good question. I've signed a four-year contract. Um, first year we won two games. I said to my old man, "I said, what the fuck have I done here?" <laughs> he said, "Well, no, we'll see how good you are." 
be a fucking, you know, coming from like an elite side to, you know, and um, so I'd done an okay uh, podcast not so long back and I said nothing against, you know, but I'd, I'd gone from um, Liverpool, if you like, to Blackburn, you know what I mean, in, in one move, you know, that... They were a poor, we, we were a the poor players son. around you as well. Well, no, what I'm saying is, they said to me, We're going to invest, we are the first of the investments, we're going to buy big, buy big, and I never. They just bought me, <laughs> you know. And uh, we won two or three games that year, that was it, really. But again, then the fans, you know what I mean? The fans sort of got on. I love, you know, I got play of the year twice, two years on the trot, um, and fans play of the year two years on the trot. So, um, I had a, I had a, a legacy with the fans there as well, in which. They sort of love me as well, you know, and uh, for that I'll be ever grateful. And when I go back up now, they look after me all the time, so, you know, it's great. So how did um, your career come to an end then? I broke Charlie McAllister's jaw playing for um, playing for OKR against all of them. How many jaws have you broken in a game? Uh, in a game? One, maybe two max, one. One definitely, cheekbone and jaw I broke Charlie's. How many sending offs did you have? Um, one in the youth. One in rugby union. So you got away with them. <laughs> no, no, and one in well, one in rugby league. Was three times. Why do you think you were so violent, I? You've you know you're an old man. Or you 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 know you're wise. You must have some sort of answer. Like you know what? Why do you think Rooney was violent? Why do you think like Gaza? You wouldn't see violent, but it, they had that they had that they had that nastiness to them, and, and just that's all I was. And as I said, to you I was brought up in um I would say in a violent I wouldn't say a violent household, but a normal household. They'll find that hard to believe these days. But everyone had a slapped ass or a clip around the ear. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things. And, you know, you just... That, that, that's, that's the mode I was brought up in, if you like. You know what I mean? And there was an edge to my game. I, if I tried to play nice, I wouldn't play. I, there was no point playing. You'd have to have an edge. Did your dad encourage you that as well? Or, you know, if you're getting, you know, like the break, the broken jaws now, what's your dad saying about that? Because if he is like your agent, is he giving no, you a bollock in or... That's my boy. No, but listen, uh, what happened to me, and uh, as, as, as I said to you with the Newbridge game, it's unprecedented. It never happened since or before. No one, no players ever got smacked. And all the press said it was a broken jaw. It wasn't a broken jaw. He had concussion. He just went to Kip. Now, every other game, every week, they'd all go to Kip. You know what I mean? Someone would go to sleep or whatever. It's just part and parcel of the, of the game. But then something happened when I'd done it. It was like I raped a six-year-old kid, you know. That's the way they, they come into me and just... There was no, once they had older me, there was no letting up. So, you know, what they'd done to me was wrong, was unprecedented. And as I said to you earlier, you know, I've never been an angel, but I'm, I'm not the thug everyone made out, you know what I'm saying? It just seems like you didn't fit the, the mould of your typical, you know, well, I fit, I fit international. It, well, I fitted it for a year and a half and then bang. You know, I, 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 I give a kid a clip on that pitch, you know, and... Oh, scrum ass don't do that. Well, why don't they? You know, well, it's all right for props prop, and second yeah. rows to do it. Well, why can't I set up, you know? And mind you, he was the second row, six foot four, six foot five. That's, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and he's gone to the police. Oh. So, I mean, uh, I don't know, but I honestly don't. Um, I think because I was getting in and out of trouble a few times uh, um, off the field. Don't forget this, uh, Cullen. Me. Don't forget this. This game's an amateur game. Forget me getting a few hundred quid a week and all that, right? It's an amateur game. I didn't get paid for playing. No one paid me for playing. You got your money through X's or something like that, or it had to be under the table, right? We trained twice a week and played on a Saturday. If we were lucky, we train on a Monday, play Wednesday, play Saturday. But this this isn't like the day where they're getting four or five hundred grand a year and they can't play half of them. The point I'm making is, you know, if 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 if, if I got a contract in front of me and it says you know if you get into trouble this that the other, then fair enough. But it it was an amateur game. Yeah, I had no rules around me. You know if if I would like I love my nightlife. I used to be out all the time, all the time, and you know one thing's for sure. Listen, my rugby was the highlight of my life. But after rugby, then I like to jump to both sides of the fence. So what I what I mean by that is, I'd probably be around people who would say no, probably not the right people to be around, but they were the right people for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, and uh, all right, I was getting into fights, this, that, the other, but let me tell you, that wasn't because of you or because of, of the boys in here at the studio. It was because of me. Someone would say something and I'd give him a clip. Or, you know, where, where, where 
my temperament was different than most players, if you like, you know what I mean? But again, it was an amateur sport. I wasn't getting paid to play. You know, I want, I didn't want to be um, uh, all the kids looking up to me. I didn't want that. I never wanted that, you know? And um, I'm just try, think, trying to think of the word, but at the end of the day, right, you, you've got to accept you are, but people got to accept, especially a judge who knows nothing about it when he's saying to me, you know, um, you yeah, you're a god to some kids and all this, that, the other. Hey, listen, I didn't want to be that god. You know, I just wanted to play rugby. You've got to accept sometimes that you are. You look at Bellas and you look at, at John Atten, but they've earned millions in the game. We never got paid a shilling, officially. You know what I mean? It was an amateur game. So when judges are telling me that, uh, you know, you're up there, you're this, that, the other, I never wanted to be. No. I never wanted to be. Okay, you accept that, you know, to a certain extent, but... <laughs> It was an amateur game, and, I was, and, 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 and that's the top and the taller than the shoulder bit for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you broke, what, what was his name, sorry? McAllister, did you say? Yeah, McAllister and the tackle hold them. Um, it's the first time, Millward, um, Roger Millward, who was the coach of, uh, he was an all time great, he was the coach of Okea. I'd just come off tour, and um, he, he asked me to play fullback, uh, where well, I usually played loose forward or, or scrum half. And um, I played fullback, and McAllister was ruining us. Um, um, I want to say Ruinous, he's big, he's a six four. McAllister, he's playing on the wing. Um, he he was Ruinous, just so the ball come across and when and I, I come across and clatter. Oh, we we had a, I, I went over there to try and do him right, but it, as it turned out, it didn't work out that way. But it did. I hit him, and um, anyway, I've got he's gone down, and the crowd's gone party, and the referee sends me straight off. Like, what the fuck, you know, you know, so. Anyway, um, it's the first time ever I had to have a police escort out of the ground because they sent me back to Cardiff because like, of the press. And again, there you are, from rugby union to rugby league. The next thing, this was on News at 10 as well. It's just ridiculous. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I got found not guilty because it was enough. And what they do in league is every game is fill- televised, every single game. So you've got TV there in front of us. So you get up and they say, what do you like? And it's just show us what happened. So you can stop it, start it, stop it. So it's boom, boom, move by move. Yeah. So I said, when I went in, I'd come across, shoulder charge him. I said, I've hit him such impact, and he's a massive man, and my head's gone down there, and his head's come down on the back of my head, and they see it. And I get exonerated, not guilty. That's what happened. Was yeah, it? yeah, and that's what happened, truthfully. But before that, um, all of them were coming out saying, this boy shouldn't, you know, he, he's a reject from Union, he shouldn't be up here, this, that, the other. I just come off of Great Britain, so and everything. So the press just went ballistic again. So... You know, and that was like the last row, was it for you? You just well, no. I went back then, and for the first time in my career, I told against the Rovers, he wanted to drop me. I said, "You're not dropping me." I said, "You know, you keep look looking on hindsight. Maybe I should have just accepted what he said, but you know, I, I just said, listen, I said, you've got to be seen to back me. Yeah? You know, you got to back me uh, by dropping me. It looks like I'm guilty. You know what I mean?" He said, "You'll do what you're told." Well, I just had thirty-five grand a week before off the club as a second payment. A third payment, I'm not sure. And um, I said, well, fuck yourself. Jumped in my car and come back to Cardiff. And you never played again? Not for that. Yeah, well, not under him. He got sacked at the end of the season. I came back then. Mm. But uh, it wasn't the same then, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I look back, yeah, I regrets. I got loads, you know, and was I wrong? <laughs> Probably. But he could have come and talked to me and, you know, whatever, because I'd done lots of things for him. I was like cortisone injections when I shouldn't have played, etc. And anyway, you know, that's that's the price. Do you need a work uniform? Want to start a clothing brand? Or maybe you have a football kit that needs a logo printed? Well, if I was you, I'd get in touch with the Reinspire Printing Company down to Forest Industrial Estate for the finest printing and embroidery in Wales. I use them for my custom-made mankini. But you could use them for T-shirts, hats, hoodies, and many, many other things. What was your... um? <clears throat> We've spoken, you know, off camera about retirement and, you know, uh, mental health, you know, even drug drug abuse and stuff. Yeah. Do you want to touch upon a bit of that, like? Well, yeah, you, well, yeah, all of those things, uh, mental health, um, and it pulls into other things. Like, um, I was I was mad on cocaine um, after you finished playing, you, you know. When he used to, um, and I could see why it's so prevalent in, in football, is it really? And you're playing in front of 40, 50,000 every week. Um, and then you go from that to nothing. 
and it's very similar to what happened with me. And well, I found the, the replacement for my rugby was cocaine, which you know, obviously, um, if anyone ever been a cocaine addict or whatever it is, they'll know that that's the start of a big fall. You know, that it, it, all you do, you, uh, you you start for, from once a week to twice a week, and before you know it, it's just five, seven days a week. It's affecting your family life. Um, you're not the same person you should be, nasty, irritable, you know, you, you, you very little, you sleep and eat in and things. And, um, and and obviously your mental your mental welfare then is in, you know, is in the ground, in the pocket. And then what you do then to try and get out of it is go and have some more cocaine. Yeah. You know, and it's so it's, an, it's, it's like a waterfall. It's water just keeps coming over the fall all the time. And, you know, as you're at the bottom, you've got to get back to the top and you never reach the top all the time. You, you can never find... You know, it's like your first line of cocaine, um, your second line, third line. It's never like the first hit. But you're just chasing a man all the time. That's all you're doing. And, uh, you know, if I could give any advice on it, uh, and it's been said a million times, um, i got a book coming out, so, you know, I, I will discuss it more than that. Most definitely. But, um, you know, the cocaine and the heroin and, 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 and the, the drug addiction in, 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 the UK, in the UK, I can speak for really, and, and other drugs, it's with all the working class. It's not with, the, you know, it's just working class, people who can't afford it. Um, and to a degree, I can understand ex-sportsmen when they get, you know, get on the piss or, they, you know, they do take drugs. You're looking for that second high. You're always, you know, with, with rugby for me, it was, it was my life, it was my high. You know, I, God Almighty, it was my high. And um, when 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 you see you know the kids off 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 off, off the estate, you know, they they got problems, and there's only few ever come out of it. You know, once they start on that slippery, slimy slope, you know. And I just um, I have people around me. Um, uh, mainly, I got to be honest. Uh, you know, you you got to put your kids there, and you look at your kids flat in the face. You know, and uh, there's a few things in my book that'll come out that my kids don't even know about now. You know, but. Having said that, you know, um, you say you're weak-minded, you say you're weak, whatever, but let me tell you, drug addiction, it's, it, it just rules and dominates your whole, your whole life. And unless you've been down that street, um, unless you've been down that street, uh, it, it's difficult for people to understand, really. What was your lowest point uh, during that time of addiction? When I started begging for money or friends and everything else, and good friends of mine were, were, were turning me down and, my my wife, um, my ex-wife left me with the kids, and, and and at the time I just went on a worse pattern. Uh, you get so many lows, mate. You know, you, you turn up in places which are rattles, you know, and you know you shouldn't be there. You know what? what the <laughs> when you're crossing the threshold, what, what, you know what the fuck am I doing in here? You know what am I doing? But you, you've just got to get it. You've got to get it. You know what I mean? And as much as you think it's a secret, it's every kind of every knows. Every knows. You know and. Uh, and I think you've got to you've got to get to the bottom. You've got to hit to, rock bottom to, to come up. You have and to come up, and, and there's only a few make it, mate. And uh, you know, touch wood, it's still a battle. You know, there's uh, every now and then you might have a glass of wine too many and think a little peck up, you'll be all right. But you know, uh, so far, you know, so far, so good. And um, yeah, I can honestly say uh, I've been the lowest of the low with depression. Um, I find it something I. Don't want to talk about it. I find it uh, I'm supposed to be this big macho man and this that the other and hey listen I'm, I'm weak as a weak as a kitten really you know and, but it's something um, I find difficult to, to talk about to be honest with you because you know you put up here as as, as, as a Godzilla if you like and really you know you're like a unicorn a pony you know what I mean yeah, but that's what some people need to hear though well I, yeah they do and um, I look if you need me again, I'll come back on. I got a book coming out, so I go in depth in, in what, what, it, what it meant to me. Yeah, and, and obviously certain, for the purpose of the book, I understand yeah, and yeah. respect that. But um, it's there's depression is a terrible thing, but drug dependence and depression could be a killer. Um, Would love to definitely get you one again for your book. Oh, definitely speak again. When, when, when that's when but, that's out, we can dive in properly about. Yeah, and I mean that. Um, you know, when my highs, when my lows and what made me and that, you know, how do you come to be, to get stuck on it? I mean, there's other drugs as well, you know? Yeah. Quickly, finally, i got a couple of questions. Yep. Uh, is there any players that you felt should have played at tier one level? What do you mean tier one? Inter international, you mean? 
Yeah, highest level. Yeah. Um, who never did? Oh, quite a few. Um, Can you name any? Yeah, Chris Hewish played for us. I played for um, uh, Pony Paul. Definitely should have played for Wales. Um, Michael Budd um, took his own life. Depression, everything took his own life. Michael should have definitely played for uh, Wales. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking off, off the top of my head, but um, it's quite a few players, you know, were good enough at the time, but politics was one thing. Yeah. You know, and uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And, and I think that a little bit of that goes on now to this day, you know. This question, you, you, you can answer this in sports and in, in, in life as well, but who's your toughest oppositions? None of them, to be honest. Uh, the best back, no, they weren't. Um, the best back row, I suppose, the hardest, or who'd get stuck in to be, be the Nice boys. That would have been um, the Pewey, uh, Di Morgan. Um, um, Lynn, no, I don't think it was Lynn, it was another flanker. But they'd get stuck in to me, if you like, but none of them, no, not, none of them. I mean, Gareth Roberts was a good flanker. Um, you have players who didn't play for Wales, um, but Powell from Newport should have played for Wales, but he didn't get Wales B cap. I mean, you've got players there. We're talking about who should have played for Wales. Played six times for the Bs. Why, why, why? You know, if you, yeah, the B, yeah. the B, the B, the B team is, is for the next step up. And if you're not good enough, you, you've had, you know, get two B caps, fair enough, and see what you're going to do. You get six, you should be. <laughs> no, no, but you, like, you know, you should, this should, someone else in that position should be coming along that, you know, because if you play six times, you're not going to play 18, you know? yeah. it's ridiculous. You know, you look at some of these players back then who who should have made it. Yeah. Any of these make it now in, in, in rugby now, do you think? Well, listen, um, Helen, if if you're getting paid fucking 500 grand a year and start off, let's start off just 100 grand a year. Listen, what some of these youth players again, 100 grand, 200 grand a year, it's a lot of money, mate. So when you're in the gym every day, there's no time to be all boozing or whatever. It's your life. It's your livelihood. So you would have been even greater well, <laughs> in that sense. Well, what, well, yeah, but yes and no. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, my time was my time. And, uh, but today's modern game, listen, you don't have a wank. Listen, <laughs> it couldn't do nothing better, you know what I mean? Your life of playing rugby, training, you know, weights, uh, uh, that's your job. Going at eight, nine o'clock, Finish at two o'clock every day and you're getting half a million pound a year for it. So you think you could fit in the modern game? Oh, easy. Don't worry about that. Yeah. 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 Any regrets? Yeah, loads of regrets, obviously. that um, It's beyond my power, but I only had one cap, obviously. And um, it stopped me being world famous, you know, being a um, uh, Hall of Famer, if you like, and all those things, which would have been great for my family and all that. And, you know, a lot of that you've got to put down to yourself, but... <laughs> A lot of it was politics. Powers of B, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They're all dead now, so good enough for them. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, final, final, you know, your take on the WRU. <sighs> the, the WRU is the WRU. They might change faces and change personnel, but they're the same outfit. I mean, um, they think we're a big force in world rugby and we're not, you know, and... Uh, all you want to do as a player is play for the Welsh Rugby Union, you know, is play for Wales and, and, and get your just desserts and everything. And you wish. Don't forget when when I was on the bench for Wales, I didn't want Wales to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just. I don't know, I didn't. Because if Wales win, you're not going to get picked. So, and then when I never got back into Wales, I, look, I was, I'm still bitter to this day about um, what happened to me, you know, 30 years ago. But at the end of the day, that's just how I am. And um, will I forgive them? Never. I'll never forgive them what they did to me, those people at that time, no. But at the end of the day, if if someone come out to me, Callum, and said, hey, bitch, come here. Here's a little whisper in your ear, all, yeah? unless you start doing behaving or doing this, doing that. You was never warned. No one never came, no one said nothing to me. One minute, when I got paid for pick for Wales, all the five selectors come up and said, you know, I've always gone for you. Well, that was a bit weird. I said, all five have gone for me, I would have been playing. <laughs> you would have been playing yeah, exactly. every time. So, you know, they're all double-headers and, uh, yeah. you know, but... Um, uh, yeah, of course I got regrets, but um, you know you have to have a good degree for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I like to do: if you've got anything to say to the people, anything positive, whether there's someone trying to play rugby, sports, or just getting getting by in life. Yeah, I mean, um, look for me in sports. You know, every you you, you see big athletes. They said, uh, you know, oh, anyone can do it, and anyone can do it. That's the truth of it, Cal. You know. Um, People can work hard and get there because not everyone's gifted. And Passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
But it, for me, it's relevant playing for um, the kayaks, Sinhal did, the old Otilians, as it is playing for Wales if you enjoy it enough. You know, it's, it's impossible to say with hard work everything will come because it won't. You know, you, you've got to have a certain amount of ability. And so what I'm saying is, whichever level you play at, whether it's rugby, football, or whatever, um, just get to get out and enjoy it, and it's, it's all relevant. There are people having a hard time with drugs and things like that. Listen, um, I would say go to counselling or whatever you can do, but um, it's a bad path, and I'm lucky enough to say um, I think I'm out of it and I've got out of it, but um, I, I think of you guys, and uh, if you can, do everything you can to get out of it. Thanks, Tommy. Listen, it's been a oh, pleasure. It's oh, been a pleasure. My pleasure. Did you enjoy yeah. it? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. It's good to talk, though. Yeah, you it know? is. It is good to talk. I want to say as well a massive thank you for these past few months. I remember when I met you in town at one time, ever yeah. since, like, he's got me at and on the... He rings me up. I think I got someone for you. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I can get, I can get, I can get uh, Neil Jenkins. I'll, I'll get a few of the players for you. Yeah, no, nah, you're the top guy. I'll get those boys for you. Don't yeah, no, die honestly, thank you so you've much. You've got to turn up on time, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Don't say I'm that. I'm five minutes away from saying I'm fucking off here. You won't be the first. <laughs> <laughs> he's lying. Thanks, boys. Really hey. enjoyed it. Cheers, boys. Thanks very much. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Sure, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure you keep an eye out for Die Bish's book coming out 2023. We will be published. We will be publishing. We will be pushing it. We'll definitely get you one again, all right? Brilliant. God bless. Look Stay forward. central. Thank you, guys. Cheers. The Central Club.